Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, pro physique athlete. Today I asked OpenAI's ChatGPT for fat loss tips. Has AI replaced fitness researchers? We'll find out. ChatGPT is an AI model that interacts in a conversational way. It's been getting a lot of attention recently and I was curious to see how it would do in a fitness context. So I asked ChatGPT for fat loss tips and today we're gonna go over those tips and I'll tell you whether I agree or not and why. I'm also gonna be scoring ChatGPT and giving you a total out of 10. If I agree, that'll be plus one point, somewhat agree, plus 0.5 points, and disagree, zero points. Okay, tip number one from ChatGPT for fat loss was, eat a balanced diet with plenty of protein, healthy fats, and low glycemic index carbohydrates. And I've shared these word for word as they said. Let's break this down. First of all, I think it's very important to have plenty of protein in your diet if you're trying to lose fat. It's important to have that protein around so you can continue to build or at least maintain muscle mass. I would have liked a recommendation on actually how much to take of these different macros. For protein, I currently recommend having at least 0.7 to 1.0 grams per pound of body weight per day. When they say healthy fats, I do agree, but it's kind of a soft degree. It's definitely important to focus on healthy fats from a health perspective. That is, I would recommend trying to minimize saturated and trans fat intake. However, having lots of healthy fats in your diet doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna lose weight. Fats do contain a lot of calories per gram. And we have to remember that the key to fat loss ultimately is calories in versus calories out. Some people do find fats to be very satiating. And if that's the case for you, I would recommend trying to have more healthy fats in your diet. But for most people, I actually recommend minimizing your fat intake just because it's very calorie dense. Lastly, we got a recommendation for low glycemic index carbohydrates, which I do agree with. Glycemic index is basically a measure of how quickly your body metabolizes that carbohydrate. Low glycemic index carbohydrates take longer to digest and will likely keep you full for longer. So for example, the carbohydrates coming from vegetables and whole grains are typically going to be good bets. Okay, so for this first tip, I'm going to give ChatGPT a somewhat agree. I'm on board with the protein and low glycemic index carbohydrate recommendation. The point about fats is a bit of a soft one. Okay, next fat loss tip from ChatGPT is to incorporate resistance training in your exercise routine to build muscle and increase metabolism. This is a great point. I think resistance training is key for people who want to lose fat. It's the most efficient way to actually build muscle and it ensures that you're training all muscle groups across your body. You want to be making sure that you're continuing to build or at least maintaining the muscle that you have so that you're not just losing muscle when you're in your calorie deficit. I wouldn't rely that heavily on resistance training actually increasing your metabolism. It is a pretty efficient form of exercise though and if you can build a lot of muscle you will burn more calories at a basal level per day. Okay, so point number two from ChatGPT gets an agree from me. That's one point. Fat loss tip number three from ChatGPT was stay hydrated by drinking plenty of water throughout the day. This one's kind of a cop-out tip in my opinion. It is true that you want to make sure that you're hydrated, but hydration isn't actually that big of an issue for fat loss once you get into a healthy range. That is, as long as you're drinking enough water, drinking more won't necessarily help you. I recommend drinking enough water so your pee is at least pale yellow, but drinking gallons and gallons of water isn't necessarily gonna make you lose more weight. So I think I'll give this tip a half point. It is true, but it's not that constructive. Okay, next fat loss tip from our AI is reduce or eliminate processed and high sugar foods from your diet. This is a great piece of advice. The problem with processed and high sugar foods is that they don't keep you very full for the amount of calories they contain. Also, these foods tend to be very tasty, which can lead you to eat more. You can still lose weight eating processed and high sugar foods if you're in a calorie deficit, but it will be a lot easier if you reduce or eliminate them. When you're trying to lose fat, I recommend getting most of your calories from whole food sources and cutting out unnecessary sugars and fats. With nutrition labels so readily available nowadays, I'd recommend taking a look at the label in the grocery store and trying to avoid those items that have really high sugar content. Eating low calorie density foods will make your dieting easier. And I think it's crucial to set up your diet in a way that's gonna be more sustainable. So the fourth tip here from ChatGPT gets an agree for me, plus one point. Next tip for fat loss from ChatGPT is get adequate sleep every night. I think this is an underrated piece of advice that I really like. Sleep and recovery often aren't given enough emphasis in bodybuilding. Making sure that you're recovering properly will make sure that you continue to build or at least maintain muscle mass. And people who are sleep deprived tend to end up eating more. This is another point where it really helps to think about how to set things up in a way to make dieting easier. The other thing about making sure you sleep enough is that you'll spend less hours awake and hungry. When you're in a calorie deficit, depending on how steep that deficit is, if you stay up really late, you're more likely to think about fitting in more snacks during that awake time. So this tip can be helpful in multiple ways. So that's plus one for the AI. Next piece of advice for fat loss from ChatGPT is keep track of your calorie intake and aim to eat fewer calories than you burn. Finally, we're talking about calorie deficits. 
creating a calorie deficit is crucial for weight loss. And both parts of the statement are important. Keeping track of your calorie intake is useful because it will give you an idea of the calorie density of different foods that you eat. It's important to get an understanding of the nutritional content of what you're eating because you ultimately want to do this in a sustainable manner based off of information that you have in your head. An easy way to start tracking is to set up a food diary where you track everything you eat for a few days and calculate the protein and calorie intake of each of those meals. You don't necessarily have to track all the time, but at least learning to do so at the beginning and then having occasional audits will be really helpful to make sure that you know you're on track. The next part of this is big and you want to make sure you're eating fewer calories than you burn. I'm presuming we're defining burning calories as your total calorie expenditure. So you want to make sure your total calorie expenditure or your calories out is larger than the amount of calories coming in or from what you eat. This is a critical point. If you're not losing weight, it's because you're not in a calorie deficit. I recommend trying to set up your calorie intake so you're losing about 0.5 to 1.5% of your body weight per week. So this was a great tip. In fact, it's probably the most important one of the lot. So this one gets a plus one. Moving on with our fat loss tips from ChatGPT, we have number seven, avoid overeating and opt for smaller, more frequent meals. This is a bit of a tricky one. I like this first point where they say don't overeat. That is, if you're trying to lose weight, you should definitely stop eating in a meal when you feel full. But I don't necessarily agree with the second part, opting for smaller, more frequent meals. This kind of opens up a can of worms with the intermittent fasting and meal frequency debate. This starts to get more into individual factors. In general, I recommend aiming for about four to six meals per day to optimize muscle growth. And this is basically gonna hold true for fat loss as well. Eating more frequently, however, doesn't always help. As a brief point about intermittent fasting, for some people, this actually helps them get into calorie deficit because they're spending fewer hours in the day eating. If, for example, you only ate from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. each day, you just have fewer opportunities in the day to put in calories. So for some people, this actually helps them create a calorie deficit, which will result in weight loss. I want to emphasize in the case of intermittent fasting that it's not actually the fasting itself that's causing weight loss, but the calorie deficit that you create indirectly because of it. So for optimal muscle growth and retention, I do recommend eating four to six meals per day. But if intermittent fasting helps you to eat fewer calories and a fat loss is your primary goal, then I think it's worthwhile to try. So I'm gonna disagree with this one. This is zero points. Okay, next piece of fat loss advice from ChatGPT is to reduce stress through activities like meditation, yoga, or exercise. This is an interesting one. I like it. I think reducing stress is very important for bodybuilding. Controlling stress is a component of recovery. And from a pure weight loss perspective, often when people are stressed, they end up eating more. The other side benefit of this is that when you have activities like this that you enjoy and reduce stress for you, you'll spend less time thinking about food, which will hopefully make your calorie deficit easier. And obviously something like exercise is also gonna burn calories, which will help in our calories in, calories out equation. The specific activities you choose will depend on the person, but find something that you enjoy and really puts you into that flow state. There is some more complexity to how reducing stress can help with weight loss. We won't do a deep dive here, but when you're trying to lose fat, keeping stress in check will be a great thing. So I agree with this one. That's a plus one for me. Our next fat loss tip from ChatGPT is to incorporate high intensity interval training or HIT into your workout routine for maximum calorie burn. Cardio is a bit of a complex topic, but the main point I want to emphasize is cardio is just another way to help you get into that calorie deficit. In other words, it's increasing the calorie out portion of your calories in, calories out equation. In general, I recommend minimizing the amount of cardio you have in your routine, at least beyond a healthy level. That is aiming to have at least about 150 minutes per week of moderate activity for health purposes. If you really go overboard on cardio, it can impinge on your recovery resources. And if you do enough cardio, it can interfere with hypertrophy. If you do decide to do cardio, there's this debate in bodybuilding whether low intensity steady state cardio or lists or high intensity interval training like HIT are better. These both do have their pros and cons. The nice thing about HIT is you can burn more calories per minute of exercise, but with the high intensity intervals, this will cost you a lot from a fatigue standpoint. For beginners or people who are training with low volumes, I think having HIIT cardio is very reasonable. But if you're an advanced bodybuilder, I typically recommend using LIS or low intensity steady state cardio for the most part. So you can check out my cardio videos for more, but I do have to disagree with this point. This point did have good intentions and it could work if you had nothing else in your program and you just added hit but kept your calorie intake the same. But I do think there's more nuance to this at an optimal level. 
There's a common misconception out there that you need cardio to lose weight that I want to set to rest. I actually went through most of my contest prep when prepping for worlds without any cardio at all. You can and I did create most of a calorie deficit from diet. Okay, our 10th fat loss tip from ChatGPT is to stay consistent with your diet and exercise routine to see long-term results. This is a great tip. In the end, consistency and sustainability are critical for bodybuilding. Particularly from a fat loss perspective, it's really important to think about setting up your diet and training in a way that you can stay consistent. A lot of people fail with fat loss because they try and set up this really aggressive diet and they end up binging on the weekend or rebounding with a lot of fat gain later. Try to set up your calorie deficit in a way where you can actually be consistent. So I'm gonna wholeheartedly agree with this last tip. Tallying up our scores here, I gave ChatGPT a score of seven out of 10 today. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with how the AI did. Some of the disagreements I had were pretty nuanced, but I really do wanna show you guys the optimal way to do things. What tips in the past have helped you lose fat? Let us know in the comments below. If you wanna see a step-by-step -step video on fat loss, check out this video where I guide you through the full process of setting up your diet for a calorie deficit. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and we'll see you next time.